Hey guys, welcome back. This is my 37th floss tube video and it will be an update of my stitching for the month of September 2018 and I guess there are a little, will be a little bit of October as well. Uh, but first of all, I want to welcome you. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that you enjoy the things that I have to share with you. If you are returning, thanks for coming back and spending some time with me. As always, I enjoy uh, sharing my stitching with you. Uh, the past month has been kind of interesting. Uh, just We've just kind of settled into our normal routine. Uh, Weather-wise, it's been kind of interesting around here. We had the remnants of Hurricane Rosa came through, I guess it's been a couple of weeks ago, and that has really cooled things off, so the heat is broken. It's actually a couple of weeks early uh, for that to happen. Usually it doesn't happen until until right around Halloween time. But we are down in the 70s and 80s, and life is wonderful outside, which is really nice. We've had quite a bit of rain, too, which is kind of unusual for uh, for this time of year. Um, Rosa dumped a lot of rain on us, and it wasn't it wasn't the really hard thunderstormy rain, it was more like a uh, constant drizzle. And we've had, uh, we've had a couple of other storms that have come through. In fact, right now it's even raining. So um, I don't know, I can hear water dripping outside. I don't know if the camera will pick up that sound, but it's raining right now. And it's once again, the, a really nice, rain that that really nice rain that kind of uh, soaks everything uh, we don't see rain like that very much in Arizona it's either nothing at, at all or heavy thunderstorms so this is this is actually kind of nice um, yeah in fact it's kind of a pain though because if you don't know about Arizona one of the things that we do that is kind of weird is we plant grass every fall uh, we the the grass uh, that that survives the winter isn't uh, hardy enough to be able to handle the heat in the summertime. Uh, we use Berg Bermuda grass for the summer, and that turns brown when it gets cold. Er. <laughs> and so we plant grass so that we can still have uh, green lawns. And I was planning on doing that today, but. It's not going to happen because of the rain. Um, in order to be able to do it, I have to mow the lawn and I have to mow it as uh, as close as I can get to the to the bottom. Basically, try to scalp all of the the leftover grass off uh, before I actually seed. And with the rain, that would just be a big pain. So I guess we'll be seeding next week, um, assuming that we don't have any rain. <laughs> Um, anyway, things are going good, and uh, I guess now I'll just uh, start. Uh, I want to respond to a couple of questions and comments that were made uh, since I posted my last update. So, uh, first of all, uh, Tammy Neal mentioned. Uh, I guess in my last in my last update, I showed kind of a I showed a couple of pictures of where I stitch. And Tammy Neal said, your stitchy place isn't very comfortable, is it? And actually, you know, I've been stitching that way with that hard wooden chair for, uh, yeah, a couple of years now. And I used to stitch on my couch, but um, as I stitched, I'd, I'd slouch further and further down into the couch and my back would really start to hurt. So sitting on that chair, it kind of helps my posture, and I don't. I, it's actually more comfortable than a than a couch is for me. So yeah, I I actually prefer that. There was a time when I was worried about it being so hard, and I actually uh, sat on an old pillow to kind of give me a little bit of a cushion. But I don't do that anymore. I just sit on the hard chair, and it works really well for me. Uh, Tammy also asked me if I listen to to books or podcasts as I stitch. Yes, I listen to audiobooks. Uh, right now, I'm I'm listening to a book called 
uh, The Birth of the Modern by Paul Johnson. Um, it's a history of kind of a world history in, uh, in, set in the early 1800s. Uh, his thesis is, is that's when the, the foundations of what we would consider be, to be the modern world and the international system were put into place. And it's really quite fascinating. I mean, we're, I, we're up into the, I'm up into like the um, 18, 1815, 1820, and it's just kind of really amazing how um, he talks about how things completely changed, how uh, travel became more cheap, uh, how the, it was, that was about the time that the United States people really started to immigrate to the U.S. and, and, um, settle in the U.S. and how the U.S. was very quickly settled and talk, right now I'm reading about I'm learning about Australia and about um, how how people were trans how criminals and it wasn't even really criminals not hard it didn't doesn't sound like they were really hardcore criminals but people who have been convicted of crimes were transported to Australia for punishment and, and how Australia got started. That's kind of what I'm doing right now. It's, it's really quite interesting. Um, uh, another, I, I also listened to several podcasts. Uh, I, I listened to several political podcasts. Um, and, and yeah, just, just things like that. And I also watched Floss Tube. I kind of, I kind of bounce back and forth. If I, if I get bored with one thing, then I'll, then I'll switch to another. I want to thank everybody for their, your answers about uh, what needles my aunt might have used for knitting lace. And I think I'm going to, um, I, I think I, I haven't yet, but I'm planning on ordering some size zero needles uh, from Knit Picks and try try knitting with those. Uh, one of the things that I was didn't really mention about that lace pattern, um, my aunt's grandma, my great-great-grandma, is the one who taught her how to knit and taught her that lace pattern. And I wish I knew more about it because um, I would kind of like to know if, how far back in the family that, that pattern has been handed down. Um, my great-grandmother was born in Nephi, Utah. Um, I have pretty significant roots in Nephi, which is a teeny tiny town that is like 90 miles south of Salt Lake. Um, and and my great-great, yeah, great-great, I think even third great-grandfather uh, was one of the one of one of the original settlers in the town, and I know that I I, I just wonder where that that lace pattern came from. Anyway, um, I and I think I'm gonna try to I think I'm gonna try to to knit it on small needles and see what happens. Uh, I mentioned wanting to hang my ducks in my cubicle, and Jen Johnson, thank you. Let me know about something that's sold on Amazon called wall panel wire hooks. They look like they would be perfect for hanging stuff on my cube. I'd never, I'd never heard of those before, um, but they would, they would work very well for, for what I need to do. And I, I just need to find the frames. Um, Stitching by Karen pointed me to a guy named Helmut Haas, who has a bunch. He has a website that's full of crochet patterns. And they are there. He has some really, really beautiful stuff on that website. So I will po post a link to that below if you're interested. Um, my crocheting, I, I, I don't feel really confident crocheting. I know how to do the mechanics, but I don't. I don't think it looks all that great. People, I see people's crocheting that looks a lot better than what I seem to be able to do for some reason. But. That's a, a really cool thing. And since then, I've also found a guy on YouTube from, um, I can't remember, Slovenia maybe? 
Croatia, somewhere, somewhere in the Balkans, um, that he's posting um, tutorials on how to knit uh, doilies and stuff. And that has been, that's, he, he has some really pretty stuff too. So um, I'll post the link to both of those if you want to check them out. Also, I did a tutorial, uh, a little bit of an update on my diagonal stitching. I had a cu couple of questions about some details about that and um, was surprised at how many comments I got um, and how many people had even more questions. I answered those questions in that, in that tutorial. Um, I think my answers are a little bit too technical to try to do here. Uh, so anyway, if you haven't checked that out, feel free to check it out. And as always, uh, you can also check out um, my original um, demonstration on how I on how I stitch diagonally. So uh, those are all the comments. As always, thank you for your comments. Thank you for your questions. Um, I would be glad to answer any questions uh, that you have feel free to post them below. And I would enjoy, I, I always enjoy hearing from you. Um, it's uh, receiving comments that kind of makes all of this worthwhile. So thank you for, for doing that. Okay, little bit of knitting update. Uh, my knitting is kind of, well, I'll show you what's happened. So I knit, the, the last square that I knit is a decreasing, a seamless decreasing square in stockinette and it's finished this is what it looks like so you see it's knit in stockinette but you've got double decreases at the corners and it makes a square and you'll notice that <laughs> it really bubbles out in the middle and I think what happened is when I switched off of my switch to double points my gauge changed and got looser probably so it, so it doesn't lay really flat and i am not sure that this is going to block out very well so i don't know i i think i'm going to have to re restitch the re-knit this and um yeah i think i'm going to have to re-knit this square sometime um Maybe maybe go down a couple sizes and, and on my double point needles and see if that makes a difference. And that kind of discouraged me. So I, oh, and then I the other thing that happened is I got really low on yarn. So I had to order uh, more yarn, uh, more of this uh, this off white yarn. It's called Cloud. It's Wool of the Andes Cloud. So I had to order more from Knit Picks. So this is Cloud. And the, the blue is called Winter Blue and it's Will of the Andes, just in case uh, you didn't know. So, yeah, look at that. That's, that's not pretty. So anyway, I, I haven't started another square since then because, I don't know. So anyway. Um, yeah, so let's do my update with my graphs. The, the first graph that I'm going to show you is uh, my stitching trend and you will see that things are kind of proceeding about the same pace, about the same number of days stitching, um, the same number of stitches, nothing's really changed here. I guess that means I've just kind of settled into a, a good groove. Um, yeah, uh, October isn't here because I haven't finished. October's not over with yet, so uh, we'll add that in when October is finished. Uh, the next graph I'm going to show you, well, we're in the fourth quarter of the year now, so I thought I'd review my annual uh, kind of summary. So here is a Pareto of the number of days that I've worked on each project this year. And... I, I look at this and I'm kind of surprised because the the number of days that I've worked on on like Let Freedom Ring and um, Winter Sampler and um, yeah 
it, it surprises me that I have those projects that I've worked on a lot and then I have all of these projects in the middle that I've only spent like 10 days on. Um, that really surprises me because it doesn't feel that way. Um, but um, I guess that's good. It means that I'm uh, those projects that I spend a lot of time on, they're all projects that I've finished or I'm close to finishing. So uh, it's good in that way. Or I, I guess the other thing is, is the some of those projects, like the two ducks, uh, they're small and they didn't take long to, to, to stitch. So that's why you're not seeing a lot of time with those either. Also, the number of stitches. And um, yeah, kind of the same story. Lots of stitches on the ends and, and not very many in the middle. You know, I've read several studies recently about uh, how people are more de people who spend mo more time on social media are depressed. And I thought, well, and I've, I've thought, that doesn't, that doesn't bother me. Um, I don't really spend a lot of time on social media. I, I have a really hard time with Facebook. Uh, about the only thing I do is post on Instagram. But I've come to the conclusion that um, I suffer from a slightly different malady. And that's that um, I am very familiar with the projects that I post and the projects I'm working on. And so I get very used to them. Uh, but when I see what everybody else is working on, their stuff looks better than mine. <laughs> I guess it's kind of the same kind of thing. And I've been, I've really been feeling that lately. Like I, I have these projects that I'm trying to finish and I'm kind of getting down with them because I've been working on them a long time. It feels like it feels like they're, they're really old and they should have been finished a long time ago. And I decided to do a couple of graphs to see if, um, if that is true. So here is a graph that shows uh, how my projects have aged over time. So each, each point in the graph is the number of days since I start, the, the average or the median number of days since I started my projects. And this, it's funny, this doesn't really show me very much. I mean, I expected uh, at the end to see this get high because I got it. I have uh, two or three projects that are coming up on like two years since I've worked on them. But I think what happened is uh, when I first started keeping track of records, I was working on a couple of uh, pieces that I had been working on for a very, very long time. Like I'm talking 10 years. And so I think that's kind of distorted this graph a little bit. So another way to look at this is um, I keep track of the number of days that I work on each project. So here is the even, sorry, the average or the median number of days that I've been working on my projects. And this kind of tells the story that I suspected. You'll see that the average number of days is approaching a maximum over the past three years since I started keeping data. And the average isn't far behind. Um, and there's, there's two ways to pull that number down. One way is to start new projects. Because then I, that, would give me, that would inject a bunch of data with uh, low numbers in, which is, I guess that's one thing I could do, but that wouldn't fix the problem with the, uh, the projects that have a huge number of days. Um, and of course the project I've spent the most on, most number of days on is Auto Magic. And um, uh, another thing I could do is just decide not to, um, to, to stop working on some stuff. But I don't think that's a good option either because, yeah, because all that would do is is make the days go out and I want to finish them. I, I, I want them done. I like them. And um, yeah, I want them finished. Uh, so I don't want to I don't want to give up on them. I've already spent a lot of time on them. So about the only uh, alternative that I have to getting this number back down so that I feel like um, 
I f so that I don't feel quite so tired of my projects is uh, to, to just plow through and finish the ones that, um, that, uh, that I've been working on a long time, which is kind of what I'm doing. That's kind of, that's what I'm doing. And I anticipate that th these numbers are gonna go down as I finish a couple of the projects that I'm working on. So um, I just keep telling myself, eventually I'll be able to start something I don't want to start something because I, I want to I want to concentrate on finishing things before I start something. And I'm actually planning on starting something. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, now is not the time. Anyway, uh, oh yeah, I'll show you this graph. This is the number of finishes I have for the year. And if you remember the last time you saw it, uh, I was at three. And now that shows four. So yes, I have had a finish. And if you have been following me on Instagram, you've seen my finish, but I'm gonna share it with you. And I'm really excited about this piece. So, um, so the, the, the piece that I finished is, Midsummer Roses. Uh, this is a design by Paula Vaughn. And I've been stitching it on 32 count cream linen. And this is what it looks like all finished. So yeah, so... I, I, I am really happy with how this turned out. I have to say that the back stitch back back stitching really made all the difference in in how things look. But the back stitching was also a major pain. And that's because all of these all of these roses there's just back stitching all the way through them. The final result looks wonderful. But it took me a long time to do. So I finished cross stitching on this last Friday and started back stitching. And well, let me think about this. Yeah, no, I finished it la a week ago last Thursday and then I started back stitching. And I had a lot of time to stitch on Saturday and Sunday last week. Uh, the reason why is uh, every six months, instead of going to church, we have what's called General Conference, and we watch a broadcast from Salt Lake. Um, it's always a special time for me. It reminds me of times when I was going to school at Utah State. I used to go to Salt Lake to visit my grandparents over those weekends, and so it reminds me of my grandparents, who I... I always end up missing right around this time of year. Anyway, because of that, um, I had a ton of time to stitch and I just decided I was going to finish back stitching that piece. I wanted it finished, so I, I stitched and stitched and stitched and I finished it and I'm really happy with it. Uh, just a couple of statistics about, the, about this. Um, as I said, it was stitched on 32 count cream uh, linen. Um, I started on, on the 8th of July 2017. So over a year ago, I finished it on, on October 7th, 2018. Um, that is 456 days from start to finish. I guess that's about a, a year and three months. Um, of those 456 days, uh, Actually, I only spent four days stitching, 44 days stitching it, and it took me three days to backstitch. So, 47 days total, and as I said, I'm really happy with with uh, with this. I'll show it to you once more, just just to brag. Yeah. So. Yeah. And as I said, the back stitching made all the difference in that. So there we go. 
nice to have another finish. Um, so in addition to, um, to that, I have three other projects to show you uh, just to update the status. It's been quite a while since my um, last update, so I have lots to show you. Um, the first project is Autumn Magic. Of course, this is a design by Randall Spangler as chartered by Heaven and Earth Designs. It's a house in an autumn setting. This has been with me for over two years and promises to be with me for at least for, for several more. Um, I'll insert a picture here of what it looked like the last time you saw it. And this is what it looks like now. So I guess we'll back up a little bit. And I had hoped to finish this page, but I didn't get, I, uh, that week I didn't have quite as much stitching time as I would have liked to have. So I came close. I mean, this is not gonna take very much time to stitch, but I really like how it's turning out. This page has been really fun because it's been house. And with every block I stitch, it adds to the design. And I right now I'm really in love with this. And I find that I, I want to stitch it even more. Um, this is the piece that I am missing when I'm working on my other pieces. So, and yeah. So, I'm going to, there's a... You know, one of the things, this piece is not perfect, or, or I should say it doesn't exactly match the chart. There are some times when I've made mistakes, and I've just said, oh, nobody will ever be able to see a difference. Uh, and and that's, that, for the most part, that's true. I can't tell you where, where my mistakes are. However, I did have one mistake that I that I papered over that was driving me crazy. And I finally fixed it. And I didn't I didn't take the stitch the offending stitch out. I just I just stitched over the top of it. And now things are now it looks a lot better. It was in a border between um, light and dark stitches and now that it's fixed it looks a lot better but anyway there we go you could probably go on instagram and go through my um september stitching of of this and if you were really observant um you could probably find where uh the when I corrected that because um, if you really if you know what you're looking for it's really obvious <laughs> I can't point to it now but you can see it anyway I'm happy with that and uh, I'm actually considering going to stitching on that every other week uh, once I get th through the the uh, pieces that I'm trying to work towards the finish on so and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, the next piece that I worked on is, of course, Let Freedom Ring. Uh, this is a design by Lila Sampler. Uh, this is Independence Hall in Philadelphia. Uh, there are a lot of people stitching this. And it's been fun to stitch. So I'll insert a picture of what it looked like the last time you saw it. I'm stitching it on 32 count cream Belfast linen, um, two over two. Um, if I had to do it over again, I would, would have chosen a, a little bit darker linen because uh, there are places where I'm going to have to add back stitching because the, the really the lightest off white color that I the I'm using is going 
doesn't show up very well against this this color of linen at any rate here is what it looks like now and I've been working on this um, this week actually so the last time since you've seen it last I finished all of this here I finished this corner flower here I stitched the flag these birds and I've started working on this uh, rope border coming across here and then I've also started working on on the, this corner flower over here so I'll give you a little bit of a close-up of what I've been working on and yes I stitched the flag without America um, I talked about doing this in my last stitch with me video about my reasons for doing that um, yeah, so it's, I don't know, I almost feel like I'm cursed with this piece because when it comes up, I don't have as much time to stitch with it as I would like to. It feels like I'm, and then it feels like I am close to getting it finished, but this is just taking a lot longer than I expected it to, so that's kind of discouraging. So yeah, all I have left to do is to finish this here. I have to stitch the Liberty Bell with the words around it and then finish this border. This border is killing me. It's just the same thing over and over again. Oof. But yeah, so um, there's that. And then the... Um, the third thing piece I've been working on is the Spirit of Christmas. Uh, this is a design by Lavender and Lace. I am stitching it on 32 count natural raw linen, or raw linen, I guess. Um, of course it's Santa, and he is really fun to stitch, and I just love, I just love the colors in this piece. I love the reds and the greens. So I'll insert a picture of what this looked like the last time you saw it. And it's actually been a while since I've worked on this. Um, so this is what he looks like now. And he is coming along. Um, so there's his mouth. There's his eyes. Uh, when I do the next diagonal, that'll look a lot better. So I am getting close to finishing. I'm actually getting close to finishing Santa. Um, I've got this diagonal to stitch. And then I think the next diagonal will pretty much finish Santa. And then all I'll have to do is finish this garland that comes around. So, and you'll see I've got, I've started it. It's showing up here and of course this ribbon down here so pretty soon all I'll have to stitch is garland and then um, I'm saving the met there's metallics in here I'm saving them for last so uh, there's metallic thread that goes in here for his belt buckle yeah no I really I am really enjoying him he is he is a real treat to stitch and he is what I'm going to be working on this next week. So, yeah, exciting stuff. <laughs> It'll be so, I, so I actually think that by the end of the year, I could have two more finishes. I, I think it's entirely possible that I'll be able to finish um, Let Freedom Ring, which I just showed you, and The, and the Spirit of Christmas. And I'll be I'll be glad for that. Um, so that's kind of what I'm, what my plans are is to keep working on those three pieces. Um, I'm supposed to add another uh, piece into my rotation, not this week but next week. And I'm kind of debating on whether or not to do that. 
um, I'm, I'm getting to the point with both those projects where I'm feeling the drive to work on them to, to get them finished. So we'll see what happens uh, when I, f how I feel at the end of this next week. Um, Monday's my birthday. Uh, and yeah, uh, I had considered doing a new start for my birthday, but um, right now I I don't feel that way. I feel more of a drive to keep working on what I have just to get I get a finish. However, I found a new love. Um, so uh, during Galleria, uh, Stephanie from Just Keep Stitching posted on one of her Instagram stories, she posted uh, a video that she took inside the Rosewood Manor room. And there was a piece there that I had never seen before that I really wanted to stitch. And it's just barely been released and I have a new copy. I have, I, I've got mine. It's called 101 Alphabets. <laughs> Ingeborg, you might want to turn your head. <laughs> I don't know, this might trigger you. Uh, yeah, there's a hundred alpha, I, I haven't counted them, but from the title, I think there's 101 alphabets in here. And since I've got it, I've looked at it. This, uh, this the, the, the pattern is uh, 55 pages long. It's huge. It's, uh, let's see. The design size is 499 by 499 stitches. And there's like a little blurb on the back that she talks about it. And she says um, that she designed this sampler over 10 years ago and she's been stitching it off and on ever since. And of course it's, it's alphabets mixed with motifs. And if you look right there, see that dog? I've stitched that dog before. <laughs> that dog is in my cor Corazon sampler. So I, I noticed that as like, I've seen that dog. Um, this looks really wonderful. And I started looking at it and it's a little bit more intimidating than I thought it would be. Um, everywhere that there is a very large letter, like right here, this A, there's an over one letter right next to it. So there's some over one stitching. Uh, there's a lot of letters that are just back stitch. They're not, they're not cross stitch, they're just, they're just back stitching. Anyway, um, on Instagram, uh, we're already talking about doing a stitch along for this. So if any of you wanna join me, I think this will be my next start. Um, if anybody I wanna join me, Feel free to let me know. Uh, we'll come up with a hashtag. Um, it's not. It probably won't happen until after the beginning of the year. I've I've got to find fabric for this. I haven't decided what I'm going to stitch it on. Um, and yeah, I I want to I want to get those other two finishes out of the way before I start it. So it's going to be uh, a little while before before I actually pick that up and start it. But I, I, when I saw that, uh, when I saw that video, I just had to, I had to have this and, um, yeah. So, yeah, so that's, that'll probably be my next start. I'm trying to, as I said before, I'm trying to drive the number of pieces that I'm working on down. And so I think, a good rule to be able to do that is to say I have to have two finishes or two or three finishes before I start something else. Because I'm feeling I you know, I'm kind of feeling the urge to start something, but I'm I'm holding off because I want to get down to like four whips. I think that would be good. Four whips with uh autumn magic being stitched every other week. That's my goal. And um, yeah, I'm, and I'm actually, with those three pieces, I'll actually be pretty close to that. Anyway, so my plans are to keep working on those pieces. I may add a piece into my rotation next week, 
uh, depending on what I'm feeling. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, uh, if you want to see the, the decisions that I make, feel free to follow me on Instagram. I'll put a link to that down below. I, I post daily stitching updates there. Um, and and always enjoy always enjoy doing that. Uh, as always, uh, thanks. Uh, that's about all that I have. I hope that you guys have a great a great month. Um, it's fall. Uh, I, it's kind of feeling fall like here. I mean, it's not fall like fall up north, but for Arizona, it's fall, and it's kind of nice. I hope that you guys are also uh, having a great a great fall and that you have a great time stitching. As always, feel free to, if you haven't yet, to subscribe to my channel. Uh, feel free to like and comment on my videos. I always enjoy hearing from you. And we will talk to you later. Goodbye.